and hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Unplugged TV Australia. Today with a very special... let me... So this, this video is about you, at least at the beginning. I just have to say a big, big, big thank you to all my subscribers, to everyone commenting on my videos. It is mind-blowing how this YouTube channel has evolved in the last few months. Um, to give you some stats, we have now 2,860 subscribers, so regular viewers on this channel here. 288 videos I made. I must be crazy, really. And we just recently reached over 500,000 views on this channel. 500, that's half a million almost. Pretty much half a million views on my videos. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought when I started with one video in 2017, half a million views resulted in almost 3 million minutes of watch time. <laughs> so a big, big, big thank you to all of you guys for watching, for commenting, for helping each other out, for making this whole channel alive, spreading the word everywhere and helping to solve this problem hopefully it is it seems like we have rising interest in this whole topic now and i know even dealerships around the world and even mitsubishi is watching videos from this channel and from gary's channel i have some inside feedback so i know they are watching they haven't subscribed yet actually but this whole community makes the channel so interesting i think and i've got a very funny feedback from one of my viewers in the uk i think and he was always shaking his head about kids watching other people playing video games and now he said he's sitting in his chair at home and watching someone in Australia driving around in the PHEV and talking about battery and degradation stuff so <laughs> he's now in the same position as these kids <laughs> he was always laughing about yeah it is it is a big community now and you pretty much know everything about me I I could potentially ask you to get me a Phillips bit screwdriver out of my workshop and you would know exactly where to find it. I mean, this is just what it is. Yeah, well, after all these um, official statements from Mitsubishi in uh, Germany, in Sweden now, in Japan and in Australia, we still don't have an official fix. Mitsubishi is still in denial of this situation of this problem and especially in the 2019 version of the Outlander PHEV we still see the battery dropping very very fast as you can see in this graph here it does not even start at 46 ampere hours as it should be when the car is new it starts at around 44 ampere hours a bit higher so you can see there's still no calibration happening when the car leaves the factory or when the car is being handed over to the customer. And we can also see 0.5 ampere hour drops in this graph. And there's no leveling off. It seems like it's in a free fall and it won't stop. And Mitsubishi is still saying there will be no fix. This is as designed. After making all these videos about the battery and the software and the statements Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi brought out and the um, question and answer they provided us with, I don't know what to believe anymore. Is it software or is it hardware? Because when we had this uh, used car here in Australia who got the triple procedure, so reset, uh, stall smoothing and um, DB cam, it came back to the owner with 39.9 ampere hours so full capacity and this was a 2014 model so quite four to five years old now and the battery was measured with 40 ampere hours and this is exactly what we want don't get me wrong but on the other hand there must be some sort of degradation in the last four or five years which does not show up in 40 ampere hours of capacity and Mitsubishi clearly said, if you do a DB cam, this is the only true measurement to determine the state of health of the battery. So they did a DB cam and it came back with 39.9 ampere hours. Does this mean the batteries are so good they don't degrade? Or is this just a software issue again, which almost always shows you the 40 ampere hours? 
which is but it's not the true capacity and then on the other hand they are saying look if your car is at 80 percent within 10,000 kilometers like in the 2019 model the software shows the true state of health of the battery as far as it, as it can it is very close to the actual capacity of the battery so they are saying at one hand in the four-year-old car the batteries are super good 40 ampere hours but on the 2019 models they are going so far down but it's still correct so what is the truth now I don't know what to believe anymore is it the battery or is it the software I think we have all proven now that this is a pure software related problem but then why is the DB cam showing 40 ampere hours with a four or five year old car this is not correct well and then my own battery is holding up very very nicely still it um, has dropped a couple of times of course as you have seen i had another drop just recently when i picked up the hay but still if it keeps dropping in this rate so every seven to ten days within 150 250 kilometers i will have to get a third battery next year at some stage because I will be down to under 80% again and this is totally insane this is from an ecological perspective total insanity we cannot keep replacing batteries just because Mitsubishi does not supply the correct software for it there will be no environmental benefit of driving a PHEV if you replace the batteries every two or three years in these cars that is total nonsense it does not make sense at all and and all these curves we see on the PHEV watchdog all these recorded data we get from Mitsubishi and from the from the MAT device from the PHEV watchdog they're all pointing to a constant and clearly artificially calculated drop in capacity somehow this has nothing to do with the natural degradation of batteries at all and I know we all hoped for the triple procedure to be the PHEV pure but it is not working as we all hoped for as we all thought it will be it was good at the beginning but now you can see it falls back into the same artificial calculation situation again and the BMU just calculates the capacity down in fairly constant and re almost reliable uh, steps and now some other groups um, around the globe here are working on different solutions there is this Lexia scan tool it's a diagnostic tool as well which connects to the OBD adapter in your car and apparently you can do these procedures with this tool as well it is a lot cheaper than the MUT device which you can buy online for about 350 400 US dollars online so the Lexia uh, scanning tool is a little bit cheaper um, I'm not sure how this software technology works with that there is some kind of subscription necessary to get this all working but obviously uh, people are looking into different solutions to do their own reset their own DB cams at home their own calibration of the of the BMU and also I know the um, someone from the team PHEV is doing this with their mobile phone so he's he's doing this actually with an app on his mobile phone it needs a certain special obd adapter and um, it, it pairs it with the software the software is ob obviously free available but then you need to buy um, additional packages for what kind of car you have and you need to buy this adapter and they this adapter pairs with the software with a serial number and a key and only then it works but he has uh, just done his DB cam over the mobile phone well it wasn't even the DB cam it was some other procedures you can do with it but the BMU showed 40 ampere hours after whatever he did um, I will give you more details later on down the track when we get uh, more 
more secure information about this whole process and what is involved and how you did it and all this kind of stuff. And of course we've got uh, people on Facebook now, they are um, posting pictures of their MUD devices and doing their own resets and DB cams. So obviously the community is getting active themselves and trying to fix this whole situation yeah just by buying different um, tools different diagnostic tools and software products and trying and experimenting with this whole situation so it'll be interesting to see what actually finally comes out of that we are at the beginning of this whole process now but as you can see some people don't want to wait for Mitsubishi anymore it has been a long time now and if your car is out of warranty um, just go for it I mean yeah it is if you use the MUD device for example it will have the same effect as if the dealer does it the manual is out there you can um, look on Facebook lots of people have posted um, how they did it so there's no secret anymore what to do and in what order and what actually happens to the car in this case so go ahead do it don't wait for Mitsubishi just get your get your car fixed yourself there are also some speculations in the forums about why Mitsubishi is not updating the software in the BMU. So maybe they cannot update the BMU code because the whole because from a technical perspective it may not it may not be possible to update the actual BMU with a new code. And they had they would have to replace the whole BMU in the car, which is not um, too difficult. It sits in the back next to the charge port I think on the side wall inside the panel but you need to find the correct BMU which actually talks back to all your sensors in the car which also communicates correctly with the rest of the car with the ECU with the um, board computer I don't know if this is an easy task to find in a replacement BMU it might be a cause why we don't see a update for it who knows it's just a speculation Mitsubishi does not give us any explanation why they don't want to upgrade the the software apart from saying it's running optimal which it clearly isn't so it might be a reason they cannot update the BMU without replacing it and then finding a new one might be impossible because they are not being produced anymore or I don't know well anyway guys this is just a quick update, a couple of news. Um, yeah, Unplugged TV news. I don't want to call it Unplugged TV news. I'm just making this video in my lunch break, so I should call it Unplugged TV lunch break. That's maybe a appropriate name for this little type of situation now we have here. Anyways, guys, thank you so much again for all your subscri yeah, subs sub subscriptions, comments, emails, messages. It is getting really, really big now and I like it. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia. Enjoying the rest of the lunch break now and we will see us again in the next video coming on the weekend and I'll show you what was in this suitcase. There was a 70 million dollar jackpot on Tuesday.